Well, I thought it was only fitting that uh, since we, with the last video, did the FT990, it would be probably appropriate to do the FT650 because it's the smaller brother. Obviously, uh, the 990 didn't come with 6 metres, so they made a market for themselves and produced the 650. And it did well. A lot of people bought 650s. They were very, very popular. Um, basically, a 100 watt uh, monoband uh, uh, transceiver. Um, they they didn't quite go the way that uh, some of the other brands did. Um, you found with Kenwood that they had a few different ideas on this. They uh, went with you know 660s and 680s and, and different ones that um, uh, you know and some of those were just 21. They were a quad banded, so 21, 28, um, um, and um, oh actually they went 7, 21, 28, and 6 meters to be fair. Uh, still a quad bander. I was just missing one band. But um, with the uh, FT650, you basically got um, a very, very uh, tight receiver on these. They, they, they did a great job of, um, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a second. Um, certainly the um, uh, transmitted, um, good for 100 watts. Um, once again, this sort of age, I always say to people, you know, look, uh, it, it's, if it's better than 80 and, you know, um, and closer to 100, well, that's great, but you know, don't worry too much if it's if it's just lagging by you know um, just by a few watts here and there. It's it's neither here nor there. It's it's not really indicative of um, the radio is dying or anything. It's just <laughs> some of the bits have got a little bit older, um, and I'd say you know uh, their uh, tolerances have moved a bit. Uh, this one I can actually say actually I've got a um, 50 microvolt signal at the moment, uh, which the meter's reading a little higher, just a tad higher than uh, it should be, uh, but. Um, uh, what was interesting is the um, when we have a look at this tone. And let me just turn the tone down on this one here. So we, all we're hearing is the radio. So what I want to do, uh, I've got 50 microvolts going in there. So we're going to go down to um, 5 microvolts. This is where it gets interesting on one of these. 1.57 microvolts, which is about what you'd expect. 0.5 of a microvolt, um, still hearing it, you know, really, as you can see, no worries. And 0.5 is always, you know, the spec that we like to see out of any receiver, to be fair. It's when they get down to 0.157, and a lot of radios at uh, 0.15 microvolts start to get, you know, you're almost wondering if you're imagining that you're hearing the noise. Well, you're not with this, and that's it. Um, 0.157 so you know sort of, um, so minus 123 dBm and they really do now when I go down to the next step I can I can definitely just hear it in there I doubt that you will 0.0495 so minus 133 dBm um, I'm going to try and turn this up to see if you can sort of hear it <laughs> I don't know whether that'll come through on the um, on the video, uh, but when I go back up to 0.157 again, you know we're really—it's such a solid signal at 0.157. So I suppose my point there is that um, this thing really does receive well um, right into the noise. So let's turn off the generate because we're sort of getting a bit sick of the uh, noise, and let's just have a little look at transmit output. Play here. Oh God, I can't whistle now. Audio. Oh, my whistle is absolutely terrible. Hello. Oh, no. I know how I can trick this. FM. Okay, <laughs> forget my whistle. Um, let's just go for solid carrier, 90 watts of FM. So um, uh, that's uh, that's doing well. Okay, three Charlie Mike testing. Don't really need my call sign for a dummy load, do I? Hello, one, two. As you can see, the deviation, uh, about four kilohertz deviation there. One, two, three, four, five, just over four kilohertz. So it's nice. It's um, um, beautiful FM radio, these things, too. You know, whether you're a 5110 fanatic like I am or, um, you know, a bit of uh, repeaters on, on FM, doesn't really matter. Um, great radio for all that. Um, the other feature that was uh, something we should have tried and I didn't try before, let me just go back to generate mode before. Very curious to see. So we're generating back at 
point, um, point 0.156 again, so point 0.1 and a half. Let's just turn the squelch back, turn the volume up. And let's have a look as to, look at that, RFM, okay. So, definitely, definitely really pulling that out. So let's go back to, with the RF amp on, point zero four, point oh five of microvolt, close enough. Now we're definitely hearing that. So let's go from no preamp, just in there, sort of, you can, and once again, you know, it's one of those signals that you're saying, oh, I'm not imagining that, but no, you definitely can hear it. But when you do this, yeah, that's, and that is at 0.05 of a microvolt. It's really an incredible receiver. It's, it really is. Um, let me turn that down a bit. All right, so basically, um, this sort of gives you an idea that if you were a six meter fanatic, um, you might be on the right path um, getting into a, a, a six, FT650, especially if you want to leave, um, and this is what we'll be doing in this one. I'm going to be leaving this on the uh, six element opti beam, it's up about 85 feet, and um, and basically this is my little spotter radio. If 5110 comes alive, um, I'll probably antenna switch that um, uh, to my FT990 with the um, ACOM uh, amplifier. I've got an ACOM uh, 1500 set up for six meters, um, and um, you know, and then I can sort of um, spin the beam and, and have a bit of a, uh, a play. But, you know, sometimes a spotter radio like this is, is great. Look, you could use this. Obviously, you could use this um, hooked up straight to the ACOM 24-7. Um, um, and uh, this is, and it would be, look, I think every bit as good as the FT, uh, sorry, the TS-990 Kenwood, um, you know, which is a big dollar difference between these two radios. But I don't think you'd see too much difference in what it is that uh, the usability of the two I think they both would be fantastic on six meters um, and look a lot of the the old six meter fanatics the ones that really you know did the hard yards getting DXCC on six and um, they swear by these types of monobander radios they um, I know uh, Steve VK3 SIX um, um, uh, he um, he was a big fan of now I'm just trying to remember which model cam what it was 680 I reckon the 680 um, now whilst that wasn't you know traditionally just a um, uh, monobander, 680 or 670 the more I think about it, um, he, you know, he just isolated that as, uh, I mean, he's a broadcast engineer, um, so he definitely knows what he's looking at, and it's sort of what got me looking at these radios where six metre wasn't just an option, um, and, you know, obviously this is dedicated six. Uh, the 680 is a bit of a bad example because I suppose it is HFN six, uh, but Steve found the, the uh, six metre side was just, you know, a, a fantastic uh, result. But um, these little uh, FT650s, I highly recommend if you um, ever see one, you know, come up. Um, they're becoming rare. They're not, I wouldn't say totally rare, but they're becoming rare. Um, uh, certainly, you know, have a look. Uh, one of the other things I was going to point out too with the um, uh, the 650, which I'll need to put on antenna to do that, I suppose. Yes, I will. Um, I'll just do put that antenna on. Hang on. So we've got a um, a power pole at the moment that's gone crazy on us. We know exactly what the problem is. We know how to fix it, but um, uh, not today while it's so hot outside. Uh, on the next couple of days we'll blast it and sort that out but it's a good opportunity to show you something uh, about the noise blanker on well not just this Yesu I, I've always thought Yesu um, just understand noise blanking um, you know I've got a $15,000 ICOM and I still do not believe ICOM understand the concept of noise blanking um, just based on the results so you know look it's it's better I mean but you know um, here this is a, a 1990s radio um, Yesu have understand, well, to my liking, I think they've understood noise blanking, uh, you know, for the last 30 years, maybe longer. Um, and the reason I say that, watch this. Have a look at that. Now, and this is a real annoying noise that um, if you didn't have some form of decent noise blanking, look at that. Now, as I said, you know, look, this happens to us about every... Uh, once, sometimes twice a year, but maybe, you know, this year, I think this is the first time it's happened this year. Normally when the insulators get all, you know, sort of uh, dry and, you know, the weather's terrible, dust gets into them and it just resonates at certain frequencies and it's a pain. 
Um, I won't tell you how we fix it because I should be shot. I, I will say we do put big rubber gloves on and try to not step in water. <laughs> All right, that <laughs> should give you an idea. Anyway, okay, so uh, that noise blanker, look at that. Um, no noise blanker would be that. And that would be if I had a radio that had a, a seriously bad noise blanker that doesn't work. Fortunately, we've got a seriously good radio that does work. So um, I could go through a lot of the features of this. Look, you know, there's um, lots of things here with the notch filter. They had quite an advanced notch on them. Um, uh, your um, shift is actually quite handy. Uh, once again, uh, you know, it's just um, a nice little function sometimes when you've got a signal that's in the noise, etc. Um, you've got about, I think there were 30 memories. Or oh, no, it might be more. Yeah, okay, sorry, I can't remember how many memories on this. I, um, you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just go to memory, and that's a fair call. Um, so, let's have a look here. Oh, I know why, because they're not really programmed in. Okay, well, there's, there's memory 22, so it definitely goes up to 22. Yes, that's right. Um, so you can basically, you know, set your memories at whatever frequency you want, but um, um, but I, I just can't remember whether these were the similar to the 990s with 90-odd memories or not. I won't sit here and program it while you're watching this. It'll be here for hours. Um, but overall, great radio. Got to say, very impressed. Um, if you you know get a chance, uh, certainly have a look out for one. Uh, you won't regret it. I, I don't really say that about radios. Uh, some radios, I I sort of think a lot of them are very much um, you know Commodore Garden. Um, try it out, enjoy it. Uh, but you'll probably you know find something else at some stage. Um, this is not one of those. These are, this is definitely one of the keeper styles of radios that uh, you probably um, and and this one will go. Uh, we're going to put it over here with uh, this fella here. Uh, I've got my FT2 102 line up there, but the 990 and um, I've got the um, Yaesu Time Wave um, uh, SP6 and I'm sort of thinking, well, if I put some pads down, maybe on top here, because it will fit, or I'm just going to move these here. We're just actually setting these up. We haven't screwed them in yet. Um, so as we work out what lineup takes up how much room, we'll sort of work out what fits and what doesn't. Anyway, should be a bit of fun. All right. Well, unfortunately, I've got to go back to cleaning up the shed. I've enjoyed being in this air-conditioned room, but um, I, <laughs> I've got to go and uh, do the hard work. Pain, but true. All right, 73s from VK3CM or JDW229 on the other one. And uh, even though I wished you a Merry Christmas on the last video, you may not have watched that one. So Merry Christmas, guys. Um, thanks very much for all your support during... Um, 2019 it's been really a lot of fun just you know bringing these very ad hoc videos nothing professional at all about them but um hey it's a bit of fun isn't it okay 73s cheers <laughs>